My initial thoughts on the script were that it was funny and I laughed out loud. And that's very rare this day. That's the highest compliment I think you can give something is that it makes you laugh. It happens to also make you think, that's a bonus. Coraline is wonderful, that's who I play. She's a public defender. Um, she's in a new relationship with Monk, and um, I think that he's open to it, especially because his life is falling away a bit and he's get, growing a new skin. And she is kind of an island of sanity in a world of chaos for him right now. Monk is a man who right now is caught in the middle. He's like in between a rock and the abyss. And he chooses the abyss. You know, he jumps because um, a lot of things in his life have not only frustrated him, but just have, you know, just been just beyond his reach. And I think he's frustrated and I think he's a little lonely, but I also think that he's ready to make a transformation. So. The wonderful thing about Monk in that name, Monk, who you think is kind of, you know, sequestered or something, is that he's born anew and he's gonna, you know, be a new man. But yeah, that's who Monk is. The themes explored are identity. Um, um, media, like who we are, stereotypes, of uh, love in a way, you know? Um, does love transcend memory? Things like that. It's, there's, it's a really powerful, complex creation that Cord has, has built here. But I really love the idea that he put identity and family together inside of, you know, how we are seen and how we storytell about ourselves. Uh, the film tackles a lot of complex issues, and it does it with humor, comedy, which is the best delivery system in the world. You know, it helps the medicine go down. Monk is inspired to write the book because he's frustrated that Although he's been a mildly successful writer, he can't seem to make the big jump to bestseller. He doesn't think that people are understanding what he's trying to say. And he's seeing young authors, and a young author in particular, who's doing well, but with stereotypical point of view and, you know, something that he really thinks is, you know, unintelligent. So in a fit, he, you know, bangs out one of them. And, you know, it's not who he is, but, it sells, you know, I mean, I have, imagine that. I mean, hence the title. Jeffrey Wright is an amazing actor, let's just say that. But he's a freak of nature, he's divine. He's, performing-wise, um, you can't get any better. He's very generous, he's, um, you know, determined in the scene to, you know, to, to, to make good on the scene, but he's also, he's taking care of you too. And you know, that's a relief. You know, that doesn't happen every day. And uh, to see that a person who's so good at what he does turns out to be so generous, it's, um, it's like a gift, it's a bonus. I hope they laugh. I mean, you know what, I mean, people, I think we've had a, a really difficult time, you know, and it's hard to find a great comedy. And I think this is one that um, everybody will dig and see themselves in it. It's about identity, it's about family, it's about being frustrated, but also finding yourself. It's about um, those silly moments where you couldn't have figured that you'd be in, and but there you are. It's about um, mother and sons, you know? It's about uh, secrets and that type of a thing. So I'm hoping that they come for a good time looking for a great movie to enjoy, and this is it.